In this video, we're going to talk about factoring and just do like a review of the different types of factoring problems that you're uh, likely to encounter. So if you want to take a screenshot or write down these problems, these are the 10 different types of factoring problems we're going to go through. And the next thing we want to take a look at here is this chart right here. And this basically gives us kind of like a decision tree or like a uh, hierarchy of what we want to do first, second, third when we're factoring. So you can see here at the very top of the chart we have GCF, meaning the greatest common factor. So you always want to look for that greatest common factor first. Sometimes students overlook this and then it makes the problem a lot more challenging than it needs to be. But then after you do that, you want to basically decide do you have two terms three terms or four terms, keeping in mind that the terms are separated by like a minus sign or a plus sign. So it's like the individual groups. So if you have two terms, then you have to decide, do you have like a difference of two squares or do you have a sum or difference of two cubes? And you would go ahead and factor it using these uh, formulas right here. Now, if you have three terms, you want to ask yourself, is the leading coefficient a one? or is that leading coefficient a not a one? Now, if it's a one, it's pretty easy to factor. You just ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to this C value, but they also simultaneously have to add to the B value? And then what you would do is, when you figure out what those two numbers are, they would go right here and right here, keeping in mind that if it's a negative, this would be like a minus something. If it's a positive, this would be like a plus something. We'll do some examples so you can see, but this is basically a review. The other option is when you have three terms and that leading coefficient, that a value is not one, is you can do something called splitting the middle term and factoring by grouping. And what you would do is you would take this leading coefficient a, you would multiply it by this constant here c, and we call that ac or a times c. So we say what multiplies to a times c, but adds to that middle coefficient b keeping in mind that if it's a plus b, that's going to be like a positive number. If it's a minus b, it's a negative number. And then what you want to do is you want to split the middle term, and then you want to factor by grouping. Now, once you split that middle term, you're going to have four terms. And so if you have four terms, you factor by grouping. But here we're basically taking a trinomial, splitting the middle term, giving us four terms so that we can then factor by grouping. So this is a little bit more process-oriented way of doing it. And then, of course, the last step is you always want to ask yourself, can I factor that further? Okay, can I factor the polynomial further? If you can, go ahead, you know, back to the start and go through the, the steps one more time. So we're going to go through these 10 problems. You might want to take a screenshot or, or write down a little diagram of this so you can refer back to it. I also have a t-shirt on my uh, spring store that has this uh, greatest uh, common factor, et cetera, et cetera, all the different steps to factor a polynomial. So you might be interested in something like that. But let's go on to the first few problems. So for the first problem here, we're looking at number one, 2x squared minus 12x plus 4. And what we're going to do here is we're going to start off with that first step. Is there a greatest common factor? Meaning, is there something we can divide out of each one of these terms, same thing out of each term. Well, it looks like they're all divisible by 2, which means that when we factor out that 2 or divide out that 2, you can see we're going to be left with x squared. Here, when we reduce this, we're going to get 6x, and then 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, if you want to check your work, the nice thing about factoring is you can always take that number or quantity on the outside, distribute it back into the parentheses, and you're going to get back the original polynomial that we started with. But now keeping in mind that when we factor, you always want to ask yourself, can we factor this further? Now we can see it's a trinomial. We can see that the leading coefficient is 1. So all we have to do is say, are there any two numbers that multiply to positive 2, but also simultaneously add to negative 6? Well, in this case, there aren't any. So that means this is as far as we can go uh, with this problem. And so that this is basically going to be our as far as we can factor that. Okay, for problem number two, we want to take a look and see, is there a greatest common factor? So first step, you always want to look and see if there's something you can divide out of all three terms here. Well, it looks like they're all divisible by three, because three goes into three, six, and nine, and it looks like they all have at least one x in them, and it looks like they all have at least one y in them, 
So now when we factor out or divide out that 3xy, what are we left with? It looks like the 3's here cancel. x squared divided by x to the first is just going to be x to the first. Here are the y's cancel. Okay, and now it looks like we have uh, 2. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Here are the x's cancel. y cubed divided by y to the first is y squared. And then over in the last one, we have 9 divided by 3 is 3. x to the fourth divided by x to the first is going to give us x cubed. And the y's cancel. And again, you always want to look to see if you can factor any further, but it looks like that's as far as we can go on that one. And you got it. Okay, so for number 3 now, let's take a look at that one. It looks like we have a trinomial, three terms. The leading coefficient is 1. These ones are Kind of easy to factor in the sense that you just have to ask yourself what two numbers multiply to 12 but add to negative 8. So can you think of two numbers that multiply to positive 12 but also add to negative 8? Well, it looks like negative 6 and negative 2. See, a negative times a negative gives us this positive 12. And a negative 6x and a negative 2x adds up to the middle term negative 8x. So you can see we've factored it. And again, the nice thing is if you know the FOIL, the first outer inner last, a way of um, multiplying out a binomial times a binomial, you'll see that you get back this original trinomial. The other way to do it is you can just distribute the x to both terms, the negative 6 to both terms, combine like terms, and you'll get back that original. So again, remember with factoring, you always want to ask yourself, can you factor further? In this case, it doesn't look like we can factor that any further, so that's our final result. Okay, let's take a look at number 4. Were you able to get number 4? So for number 4, again, we have a trinomial, three terms. The leading coefficient is 1. So all we have to do is ask ourselves, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 12 but add to negative 1. Now you don't see a negative 1 here, but a negative x is the same as negative 1x. So I'll just put that 1 in there for us. So can you think of two numbers that multiply to negative 12 but add to negative 1? Well, it looks like negative 4 and positive 3. So you can see that negative 4 times positive 3 gives us negative 12, and that inside and outside product, negative 4x and positive 3x, adds up to negative 1x. And can we factor any further? No, it looks like that's as far as we can go on this one, so that's going to be your final result. Okay, now taking a look at number 5. What do you think for number 5? For number 5, it looks like we've got a sum of two cubes. Again, before you even jump into that, you want to ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor we can divide out of both terms? No, it doesn't look like it. Then you look at it and say, well, how many terms do we have? Well, we've got one group here, one group here. So there's two terms. We know it's a binomial. And so then the next thing we want to do is we say, okay, it's a sum of two cubes. Remember, sum of two cubes factors like this. a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared. And some people like to remember the signs, whether it's positive or negative, by this acronym SOAP. Same, opposite, always positive. So meaning if you're adding, then it's going to be the same thing here, adding. And then the next one is going to be the opposite. So if you add, then the next one subtract. And the last one, AP, always positive, just means that last one you're always going to be adding. But the thing that uh, sometimes stumps students here is like figuring out what are the A and B values. Well, you, what you want to do is you want to take the cube root of this. So what times itself three times is 8x cubed? Well, that's going to be 2x. So that's going to be our A value. And what times itself three times is 27? That's going to be our b value, that's 3. So in this equation, we're going to use 2x as a. We're going to use 3 for b. And then you want to just substitute. So 2x squared, that means 2x times 2x, or 4x squared. Uh, and then 2x times 3 is going to give us negative 6x. And then uh, 3 squared is going to give us 9. And again, you can always look and see if you can factor further, but as long as you factor out the greatest common factor first, uh, a lot of times people look at this trinomial here, they think they'll be able to factor it further, but you won't be able to factor that any further. So you just have this binomial times a trinomial. That's as far as we can go on that one. And you've got, you've got it. Okay, so if we're looking at number six now, what do you think for number six? Well, it looks like there's not a greatest common factor, right? But 
we've got two terms. So is it a difference of two squares, a difference of two cubes? Definitely a difference because we can see this minus sign here. Uh, so it looks like it's a difference of two cubes. The reason being is what times itself three times is 64y cubed? That's going to be 4y. And what times itself three times is uh, 1. You don't have to worry about the minus sign, just, just this 1 here. That's just going to be 1, so b equals 1. And then in the formula over here that I just wrote on the for number 5, the signs are going to be a little bit different. The signs are going to be minus, okay, plus, plus. So people sometimes just memorize that, minus, plus, plus. That's how we used to do it in school. But the other way to do it is you can think of the acronym SOAP. So same, meaning if you subtract, see how we're subtracting here, it's going to be the same. You're going to be subtracting. Then it's going to be the opposite. So you're adding. And the last one, always positive. You're always going to be adding. So now if we go ahead and factor this, we can see that we're going to have 4y minus 1. And then we're going to have a squared, so 4y times 4y is 16y squared, plus a times b, which is 4y, and then b squared, 1 times 1 is 1. And we've got it fully factored. doesn't look like we can factor it any further. That's our final result. Okay, for number 7 now, it looks like we've got a polynomial that has four terms. Again, the first step is always to look for that greatest common factor. In this case, it doesn't look like there's a greatest common factor. So what we want to do is we want to use our factoring by grouping since there's four terms. So what you want to do is you want to group the first two, group the last two. Another way to do this is you can put parentheses, so you can kind of like group like this. But when you do that, you want to make sure you capture you know, the sign here. Now these are not multiplied together. There's actually a plus sign in between those two groups, but some people like to do it that way. Now you just ask yourself, what can I divide out of 8x cubed and 4x squared? Well, it looks like we can factor out or divide out of 4x squared. If we do that, we're going to be left with 2x minus 1. And then what can we divide out of 6x and negative 3? Looks like we can divide out a 3 or a positive 3. So I'm going to put plus 3. And that will also give us 2x minus 1. Now when we look at this group here and this group here, you can see they both have a 2x minus 1 in common, right? So this 2x minus 1 here and 2x minus 1 here. So if we factor out that 2x minus 1 out of the first group and 2x minus 1 out of the second group, what are we left with? We're left with 4x squared plus 3. Now again, you always want to look to see if you can factor further. It doesn't look like we can factor either of these binomials further, so that's going to be our final result right there. Okay, let's take a look at number 8 now. So for number 8, what do you think about this one? Is there a greatest common factor? doesn't look like it. Uh, so then we go to the next step. Are there two terms, three terms, or four terms? looks like there's three terms. Remember the terms are separated by, by the plus or minus sign, so three three groups there. Is the leading coefficient 1 or not 1? Well, it looks like here the leading coefficient is not 1. So here we're going to use our AC method, meaning we're going to take the A value 3 times the C value negative 10, and we're going to ask ourselves what two numbers multiply to A times C, which is negative 30, but they simultaneously add to the B value B value, which is 1. See this number in front of the middle term there. So can you think of two numbers that multiply to negative 30 but add to 1? How about 6 and negative 5? Okay, now you're saying, Mario, well, what do I do with that 6 and negative 5? Well, you see this 1x? What you want to do is you want to split that middle term, meaning I'm going to write it as 6x and negative 5x. So that's coming from the 6 and negative 5 here. Again, I have to put this x in there because 6x minus 5x adds up to the middle term 1x. Then I just bring down the first term, 3x squared, and I bring down the negative 10. Okay, so now look what we have here. We have a polynomial with four terms. How do we factor when there's four terms? Well, we can do our factoring by grouping. Now, some people like to put little brackets like that. Some people like to draw a little dividing line. Some people like to use parentheses. I'll just do a little combination of two of the techniques here. And we want to ask ourselves, hmm, what can I factor or divide out of 3x squared and 6x? It looks like I can divide out a 3x. If I divide out that 3x, I'm going to be left with x plus 2. What can I divide out of the last two terms? 
looks like a negative 5, and I'm going to be left with x plus 2. Now here, sometimes students make a little bit of a mistake because they forget to factor out a negative number if this term here is negative, so that's important. The other thing students sometimes forget is that here you've got a negative divided by a negative, which is going to give us a positive or a plus sign there. So just be careful um, when you do that. Now we know we're on the right track to, as far as factoring by grouping because you can see in that first group and the second group what do we have in common? x plus 2. When we factor out that x plus 2, what are we left with? 3x minus 5. Now if you're not convinced that that's the correct answer, you can always FOIL this out or distribute twice, multiply it all out, and you'll get back that original polynomial that we started with. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so for number 9, what did you get for number 9? Did you Were you able to do this one? So for number 9, it looks like we've got two terms, but before we get ahead of ourselves, is there a greatest common factor? Well, it looks like we can divide both of these by 10. So if I divide them both by 10, we're left with 9c squared minus 4. Then we ask ourselves, can we factor further? Well, it looks like we have a binomial, two terms, and there's a minus sign in between. That's a difference of two squares. So we're going to factor it using the difference of two squares formula, a plus b, a minus b. And all you have to do is take the square root of 9c squared, which is 3c, take the square root of positive 4, which is 2, make one of these positive, one of them negative, and don't forget to bring down that greatest common factor that you factored out in the very beginning, and that is going to be your final result. Again, you always want to take a look to see if you can factor further. Sometimes you might have to factor 2, 3, 4, 5 times, right? So you want to just keep going as much as you can when you factor these. Okay, last problem. This one's a tough one. See if you can get this one. Uh, I'm going to walk through it here again. The first step is what? The first step is always to look for the greatest common factor. So what can we divide out of all these terms? It looks like we can factor out a 2. So if I divide out a 2, that's going to give us 20x cubed plus 8x squared minus 45x minus 18. Then we notice, hmm, how many terms do we have? 2, 3, or 4 terms? Looks like we have four terms. So when we have four terms, we know we're going to be doing our factoring by grouping, or at least trying to see if, that, if that's going to work. And so it looks like here, when what can you divide out of 20x squared and 8x squared? It looks like we can factor out a 4x squared. Now if we do that, we're going to be left with 5x plus 2. And what can we divide out of the negative 45x and negative 18? Looks like a negative 9. So that's going to give us 5x plus 2. Now we know we're on the right track, okay, uh, because we have a 5x plus 2 in common in both groups. But again, don't forget about that greatest common factor, that 2. I'm going to bring it down, put some other square brackets here around this so we don't forget about the 2. Now here in this first group and second group, we can see we have that 5x plus 2 in common. So I'm going to factor that out, which is going to leave us with 4x squared minus 9 bringing down that greatest common factor we did initially, the 2. And then we're going to ask ourselves, can we factor this any further? Well, it looks like we've got 4x squared minus 9, which is a difference of two squares. So we can factor that as 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. We're going to bring down the 2 and the 5x plus 2. And we're going to ask ourselves, can we factor that any further? Well, it looks like that one can't be factored any further. Again, if you want to check your work, you can multiply it all out. Make sure it gives you back that original polynomial. And you can double check your work. So I hope this was a good factoring review for you. Or I hope you picked up a few tips here. Uh, I'll put a link to another video about uh, factoring if you want some additional practice. And keep up the great work. I'll see you in the next video.